That's right. It's episode four. True Detective. Night Country. Put me out of my misery. Hello, friends. I am the man you may know as E from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And we're about to review, with spoilers, True Detective, Episode 4. I'm being tortured by watching this. (laughs) But I will say you guys asked for it. So I'm going to do it. Can't wait for your episode four review. Diego Diablo, thank you. You are officially torturing me. I did watch it, and then I go to myself, do I really want to review this? But I can at least make a few points that hopefully make it worth it for you guys. I do love when you guys tell me to watch things I don't like. (laughs) But I'm trying to hang in there. Just for you guys. And look, let me put it this way. The acting is not terrible. There are some good things about this. And there's just, it's just poorly written at this point. And nothing happens. Literally, there's nothing happening. I'm going to say after four episodes, we're four episodes out of six in. And they have yet to determine whether or not this is a murder. (laughs) I just want to, you have to understand. This is a, it's supposed to be a procedural It's supposed to be a mystery about a crime. And after four episodes, they just may, maybe have determined that this is a murder. (laughs) Because a veterinarian told them that they died of fear. Not because they died of... They didn't die of the frost or freezing in the Arctic. So... Oh, God help us as we go through this. But let's take a look. Let's see what's going on. True Detective. (laughs) Powerful ending. Redeems an episode that feels strangely out of place. Strangely out of place because nothing happens. (laughs) One thing happens. And it's not connected to the murder as far as I can tell whatsoever. It's just a sad, tragic thing that happens. So, it's Christmas Eve. So fifth or seventh day of night I I can't keep track anymore and uh, nothing has changed they have no leads nothing has moved forward (laughs) I have to read the recap because honestly I don't remember if anything happens in this episode Um, I think the biggest problem with the show is there's not any real likable characters I kind of like the old lady who sees dead people and no I don't like Navarro (laughs) I I feel like uh, Kaylee Reese I've come to the determination that she's trying real hard with the material that she's given she could be likable and again this is spoiler so I'm going to bounce all over the place you're a cop and you have cheek piercings and a nose piercing and you go and get your teeth kicked in for no reason by a bunch of like Alaskans that you picked a fight with and none of them ripped out any of your piercings. Mm, gonna disagree that that seems like a real cop. So I just want to point that out. I also want to point out one major enormous plot hole in the show. And maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand what's going on. And maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention. But all of their clues so far they have a cell phone and the cell phone not only has a a video that i guess came from instagram or tiktok or whatever or this guy's pride whose phone is it if it's the girl who gets killed her phone if she got killed in an ice cavern how is her phone back at her house just explain it to me i don't understand how her boyfriend's video is on her phone i'm just i'll I'll chalk that up to luck or whatever maybe the video of the guy having a seizure and saying she's awake maybe maybe got sent to her phone if she died in an ice cave how is the phone back in her house 
And if you tell me the boyfriend took it there, I will just, I'm going to throw the show out into the ocean and let it freeze to death because that's unacceptable to me. The only clue that these two cops have, the only thing they have to go off of, and first of all, I don't know how they determined it was an ice cave with whale bones. I don't know. None of the characters are... Ex- Jodie Foster is a hua. She literally bangs everyone in town, and I I don't believe it. I don't... Unless she's just like, hey, she must walk into people's houses and just spread her legs and says, let's go. And... Evangeline Navarro, I I don't know what's going on there, but I don't feel a lot of sympathy for you. I feel really bad for your in your insane sister. Like, okay. Uh, and this is coming from people who like the show. This is a review. This is a recap. So I must be the only human being on YouTube who talks about this show. If you find other channels. Let me know. I, there must be some people who positively review it. I'm probably the only negative reviewer left because I can't, I can barely tolerate it for two more episodes. Hardened detectives. None of the show makes sense. I, it just, it doesn't. And Jodie Foster's character is so evil to everyone she talks to. It's in how you can have characters that no one likes. The interesting part of True Detective Season 1 was that they had redeeming qualities. These people have no redeeming qualities. Jodie Foster, there's nothing redeeming about her. She's killing, she's destroying her detective, like the kid who works for her's marriage. She's rude to everybody. She's mean to Navarro for no reason. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't, why she saw the one-eyed polar bear, I don't know. Uh, but let's talk about this particular part. The show fails to establish the relevance to its primary drama in its hurry to create a mystery that not only confounds but scares audiences. Well, scare, it's not scary. So I don't know what they're talking about. Essentially, there's nothing. The point is nothing's connected to anything. Right? Mental health issues don't know what they're talking about. So essentially, at one point, again, nothing happens. Um, Jodie Foster yells at her indigenous daughter, makes her clean off the the inking that she's put on her face. Doesn't seem to turn anybody off up there. So why she wouldn't just let her get the tattoo if she wants to? Don't know. Don't really care. Where's she going to go live? Because she doesn't want to live with Jodie Foster anymore. I don't know. She's going to go somewhere else. Do, where and kneading dough is something like super indigenous. I've never seen anyone knead dough before. So her daughter leaves. Uh, Navarro's sister goes insane again. She clearly has mental health issues. They self check her into the lighthouse and she immediately walks out in the same night. She walks out of the lighthouse. This you know, re whatever facility it is and walks out onto the, st- onto the ice, into the ocean naked. Why? Cause she sees dead people. Okay. Whatever. Bigger heart. Ho- it's weird. True. It, again, this is true detective in name only. This has n- no, I don't understand. And what's so weird about true. De- it's pacing is off. The pacing sucks. Nothing. This is barely enough for three episodes. Maybe, just maybe, you could make a movie out of this. If you consolidated all six episodes into a movie, maybe I could buy it. They clearly don't know what they're doing because they have no... None of the scenes mean anything. They're all irrelevant. Why the detective kid's dad got stood up by his his bride? I, nobody knows. Nobody care. I don't care. Don't care. Um... None of it. It, it, it. There's nothing to connect us to any of the mystery that's going on. Is it supernatural? I don't. I don't know. I don't care. Just, I just don't care. Please give me a reason to care about this. Um. In fact, when I Googled True Detective episode four recaps, so I could remember what happened, there, all the recaps are this short. There's there's nothing. There's not a lot going on. So let's let's skip to the next article because I, I have a couple of to look at. 
What's up with the ghost of True Detective? This is from Time. Night episode, episode four. You know, season four, episode four. Uh, it says here, uh, the, the, uh, nobody knows what's going on, essentially. It seems like a departure from previous seasons where the supernatural undertones could be largely explained away by plot points which were grounded in reality. In episode four progresses, it seems like there's really ghosts. Uh, again, these are the worst cops you've ever seen. Navarro, they establish, it's it's all about establishing things and then not paying them off or establishing them. And then pay, this is just bad, bad writing, right? They establish earlier in the episode that Navarro needs to go see a suspect and drunk Jodie Foster can't go because she Navarro needs backup. She can't go by herself, right? Normally, partners, maybe they would just go by themselves to create some tension. Instead, she ruins the kid's uh, you know, Christmas Eve and makes him go, and they go into this dangerous situation. And then they proceed, then later in the episode, Navarro and Jodie Foster, whatever her character's name is, they decide to go on again into a dangerous situation because they're tracking somebody down. Yet they, they don't back each other up. Uh, Navarro wanders off and because she sees a ghost or something and disappears. And then Jodie Foster's by herself with a dangerous subject who could be armed. Uh, terrible policing. You'd be fired immediately, immediately if that happened. Like, there's no way anyone survives this as far as being a professional police officer. Again, they don't even like each other, and she abandoned her. And I'd be like, yeah, we're not, you're good, you're done. We're not working on this case anymore. Doesn't matter. No, no logic fits into this show. Just none, right? Just like I said about the plot hole with the, the phone that magically made its way back out of an ice cave with whale bones, right? So no, none of this, you know, this is it. They, they, most of this is talking about, ep, uh, you know, episode three. And the psyche of her losing her sister, which is completely irrelevant to the case. It's completely irrelevant. Now we look at True Detective season four is getting lower scores than even season two on IMDb. Everybody hated season two. Episode one of six of uh, head... Season one had six of eight episodes scoring a nine or above. Season three, seven of eight episodes scoring an eight above, no nines. Season two had four of eight episodes with an eight above. Meanwhile, season four's first two episodes rated 7.4 and 7.3. It's terrible. 7.3 and 6.7, the lowest in the series history by a full 0.60%. Strange disconnect. Because Rotten Tomato critics have it at 92%. But the audience score on IMDb is 67%. Because it sucks. The show sucks. I'm tired of it. I, none of it. it, it it's it's it barely. Again. Let's just go back. And I'll, I'm going to end on this. We are four episodes in. And we have not yet determined whether or not this is a murder. Do you still care? I don't care. I don't care. But I'm still watching it. We got two episodes left. I guess we're in it for the long haul. Thank you for commenting. I appreciate it. If you tell me to watch it, I guarantee you, well, I'm in it to win it. And I'm in it to rant like a maniac and point out bad writing because apparently that's all I can do at this point. Again, I don't even blame the actors at this point. They're given the performances they can. None of them are even that terrible. But this show is absolutely garbaggio let me know what you think in the comments below i do appreciate catch our podcast it is 7 30 p.m eastern standard times on friday nights come join us you could join us in bumble you can do all sorts of stuff you can join us help support the channel it's growing it's getting bigger super chat us we appreciate any support that you can give us because we love all y'all but in the meantime i'm on to the next one